Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, the world of athletics is in a state of turmoil tonight, with the former president of the athletics governing body accused of enabling conspiracy and corruption of the sport that he was supposed to protect. A report from the World Anti-Doping Agency also claims that the IAAF Council, which included the current president, Sebastian Coe, could not have been unaware of the extent of doping in athletics. But Lord Coe says he was unaware. Despite this, the World Anti-Doping Agency Independent Commission insists that Sebastian Coe is the best person to lead the sport out of its current troubles. Our chief correspondent, Alex Thompson, has this. The investigation's conclusions are damning. This man, the former IAAF president, Lamina Diak, it says, ran a corrupt body from the top down with extortion, ignoring the rules and nepotism all rife. And all of this was going on in the run-up to the London Olympic Games and for a considerable time before that. The information the IC has very clearly indicates that the disruption of the Federation <coughs> emanated from the very top, the president, Lamine Diak. So with the London Olympics and Moscow Championships coming up, the president himself, the report says, activated his own secret, corrupt unit within the IAAF. Their mission, to help Russian athletes cheat over blood samples in their ABPs, athletes' biological passports. What was forming in the anti-doping department was the beginnings of an informal governance process operating outside of the proper governance process of the organization. There was cronyism and nepotism. The president, the investigation says, brought in his family to corrupt world athletics from the inside. The president, Lamine Diak, was above the ruling council of vice presidents, including Lord Coe. But he had an informal, illegitimate governance structure outside the IAAF, allegedly featuring Habib Sisse, his legal advisor, Gabriel Dole, the head of anti-doping, and the president's sons. Papa Masata Diak and Halil Diak, who were working as contractual consultants. Together with corrupt Russian officials, they allegedly ran a network which extorted and corrupted the sport. They had a list of 23 Russian athletes suspected of being doping cheats. That list was also used to extort, cover up money from at least one Russian athlete, Shovakova, with payments flowing to ARAF officials and IAAF consultants and the legal advisors, he say, and perhaps employees within the IAAF. Athletics World Anti-Doping Body has now called in French prosecutors to investigate possible criminal charges. The former president's already been arrested. One of his sons appeared on a wanted list this afternoon. Both deny any wrongdoing. Today, the investigation ruled it was inconceivable that the IAAF wasn't aware of what was going on, that it had repeatedly failed to investigate itself. Is this organization in denial? Yes. I, I mean, of course there was cover-up and delay and, and all sorts of things. You know, it, it acknowledge this. The current president says denial, not at all. Cover up, absolutely. I don't think for one moment we're in denial. And if I've ever given that impression, then I apologize now. You know, we know the seriousness of this. Um, the delays were a cover up. The athletes that were subsequently sanctioned and publicly sanctioned um, is, is a good end to the story, but that does not deny the fact that this was in large part a cover-up. Bizarrely, although not a journalist, Seb Coe somehow got into the press conference today because he knew what was coming. The investigation damned his organisation, but also said Coe is the best person to get it out of the mire. Alex Thompson. Well, earlier I spoke to the German journalist Hayo Zeppelt, whose documentary lifted the lid on claims of systematic doping in Russian athletics and a cover-up involving IAAF officials. I started by asking him whether Sebastian Coe was the right man to lead the reforms within the IAAF. 
I don't think that Mr. Ko plays a very good role currently. He called uh, our, all our declarations, uh, all our uh, allegations, a declaration of war uh, in August 2015. That is was was what is a uh, clear comment on it. Right. And I think it would be much better to to address the real issues in anti-doping as to uh, fight with journalists. I mean, there've been lots of comparisons higher with FIFA. I mean. On one level, FIFA was worse as a scandal because of the monies involved. On another level, though, FIFA only dealt with corruption in the administration. This deals with corruption amongst the athletes themselves. Do you think we will ever be able to trust athletics again? That depends on uh, the trust which we, which we can have in the, in the international governing body like IWF. So far, I wouldn't trust them. But let's wait and see. You know that uh, cycling, for example, for a couple of years ago had uh, very similar problems and no one at that time, nobody uh, trusted them. And I can imagine that IWF has also now to start uh, a process uh, of changes. And if this happens uh, um, in a couple of months or in a couple of years, then we can uh, decide if they have done the right or not. One thing I have to add, uh, you are right when you're saying that uh, what happened in FIFA didn't touch the, the competition itself. But here, and that makes it really, really very worrying all what happened in IWF was clear was a clear interference uh, into the integri integrity of the competition itself do you think that enough has now been uncovered or is there still more that needs to be uncovered there's still more that needs to be uncovered. We only talk about IWF and we only talk about Russia. And gi I give you one example there. IWF uh, was uh, treated today very reluctant by the Commission in regards to the database, which we, which we have revealed in uh, August 2015 together with the Sunday Times. Uh, they said that uh, IWF did uh, a quite good job in some parts of his anti-doping um, work. Um, but what they didn't uh, mention that they have been no blood tests at all, for example, in out of competition in Kenya. And Kenya is the most successful country in the whole world in athletics. So can you trust an organization where when they don't do any blood tests in, in Kenya, for example, I wouldn't do so. So for example, Kenya might be the next target of investigation for an independent commission right. in, uh, in the World Anti-Doping Agency. Hi, Zeppel. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.